Welcome, Monkey Mischief Classroom, to Storytime. Today, I'm going to read Chapter 2 of the Flat Stanley story. It's getting juicy, so now we know why he's flat. Now let's see what adventures he's going to have being flat. So what I want you to think about is what are some of the advantages of being flat? That's what you're going to answer at the end of this chapter. So good luck. Chapter two, being flat. When Stanley got used to being flat, he enjoyed it. He could go in and out of rooms, even when the door was closed, just by lying down and sliding through the cracks. At the bottom, Mr. and Mrs. Lapchop said it was silly, but they were quite proud of him. Arthur got jealous and tried to slide under a door, but he just banged his head. Being flat could also be helpful, Stanley found. He was taking a walk with Mrs. Lambchop one afternoon when her favorite ring fell from her finger. The ring rolled across the sidewalk and down between the bars of a grating that covered a deep, dark shaft. Mrs. Lambchop began to cry. I have an idea, Stanley said. He took the laces out of his shoes and an extra pair out of his pocket and tied them all together to make one long lace. Then he tied one end of that to the back of his belt and gave the other end to his mother. Lower me, he said, and I will look for the ring. That's very thoughtful of Stanley. Thank you, Stanley, Mrs. Lapchop said. She lowered him between the bars and moved him carefully up and down and from side to side so that he could search the whole floor of the shaft. Two policemen came by and stared at Mrs. Lampchop as she stood holding the long lace that ran down through the grating. She pretended not to notice them. What's the matter, lady? The policeman asked. Is your yo-yo stuck? I am not playing with a yo-yo, Mrs. Lampchop said sharply. My son is at the other end of this lace, if you must know. Get the net, Harry, said the second policeman. We have caught a cuckoo. Just then, down the shafts, Stanley cried out, Hooray! Mrs. Lampchop pulled him up and saw that he had the ring. Good for you, Stanley, she said, and then she turned angrily to the policeman. A cuckoo, indeed, she said. Shame. The policeman apologized. We didn't get it, lady, they said. We have been hasty. We see that now. People should think twice before making rude remarks, said Mrs. Lambchop, and then not make them at all. She's got a point there. You always want to be polite. The policeman realized that was a good rule and said that they would try to remember it. One day, Stanley got a letter from his friend Thomas Anthony Jeffrey, whose family had moved recently to California. Hey, that's where we live. A school vacation was about to begin, and Stanley was invited to spend it with the Jeffreys. Oh boy, Stanley said, I would love to go, Mr. Lapchop sighed. <sighs> a round trip train or plane, airplane ticket to California is very expensive, he said. I will have to think of some cheaper way. When Mrs. La Mr. Lambchop came home from the office that evening, he brought with him an enormous brown paper envelope. Now then, Stanley, he said, try this for size. The envelope fit Stanley very well. There was even a room left over. Mrs. Lambchop discovered for an egg salad sandwich, made with thin bread and a toothpaste case full filled with milk. They had to put a great many stamps on the envelope to pay for both airmail and insurance, but it was still much less expensive than a train or airplane ticket to California. The next day, Mr. and Mrs. Lampchop slid Stanley into his envelope, along with the egg salad sandwich and the toothbrush case full of milk and mailed him from the box on the corner. The envelope had to be folded to fit through the slot, but Stanley was a limber boy, and inside the box, he straightened 
right up again. Limber meaning you're flexible. Miss, Mrs. Lampchop was nervous because Sally had never been away from home bef alone before. She rapped on the box. Can you hear me, dear? She called. Are you all right? Stanley's voice was quite clearly. I'm fine. Can I eat my sandwich now? Wait an hour and try not to get overheated, dear, Mrs. Laptop said. Then she and Mr. Laptop cried out, goodbye, goodbye, and went home. Stanley had a fine time in California. When the visit was over, the Jeffreys turned him in a beautiful, returned him in a beautiful white envelope they had made themselves. It had red and white, white, red and blue markings to show that it was airmail and Thomas Jeffrey had lettered it valuable and fragile and this end up on both sides. Back home, Stanley told his family that he had been handled so carefully, he never felt a single bump. Mr. Lampchop said it proved that jet planes were wonderful and so was the postal service and that this was a great age in which to live. Stanley thought so too. Wow, that was a great chapter. A lot happened. So I want you to think about all the ways that it was an advantage to be flat like Stanley. Boy, I wish I could be flat and be mailed all over the world. I'd sure love to see the world that way. Let me know what you would love to do if you were flat. Good luck.